the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The last couple of weeks have been a trying time for our St. Nicholas family and the greater Wilmington community. Since the new year, really, we have had, unfortunately, quite a few funerals and even more passes of loved ones who have been buried elsewhere. Yesterday, this recent trend spilled over to the city around us when thousands of Wilmington locals gathered along the roadsides to honor the life of our own specialist Antonio Moore, who lost his life overseas while serving his country. A member of the 363rd Engineering Battalion and the 411th Engineer Brigade, Moore was only 22 years old and a 2016 graduate of John, John T. Hyder High School. Among those who came out to pay their respects were many of our own faithful here. The immediate response shown by so many of you here at St. Nicholas was an incredible display of Christian love and decency in a time where we were receiving sobering news for our city. I'm extremely proud of each of you, and I am very grateful to be considered the parish priest of a church that rises to meet the needs of any situation without hesitation. Thank you all. Last night, as I was scrolling through the social media posts and watching local news recordings of the day's events, it occurred to me that I kept seeing the same general post being offered by separate people in different places. Allow me to share a few of them. Mallory, wishing you peace and loving memories. Sarah Butler, thank you for your service and ultimate sacrifice. Rest in peace. Judy Heron. I pray that peace be with you in this most difficult time. And Douglas Blue, remember and rest in peace, brave soldier. We will remember you always. Out of the 122 posts that were on Specialist Moore's page at the time of my writing this, the word peace occurred in 61 of them. That's exactly half. We often say this when we comfort someone during the time of a different loss. But what do we mean when we say to each other, peace be with you? In Hebrew, in the Hebrew scriptures as seen in our Old Testament, the idea of peace is shalom, which means fullness or completeness with God. A renowned Antiochian priest, Father Joshua McCool, said in a recent homily that peace of God comes from continual awareness of his presence and from communion with him through our prayers. But our Old Testament view of peace isn't the only perspective we have. The New Testament, peace, is Irim, which now has become something that has been extended to mankind as well. In Mark chapter 9, verse 50, we see that, that Christ is commanding his disciples to treat each other with peace, to receive each other in harmony. In fact, Elder Thaddeus once wrote that it is our duty to pray sincerely for all men that God may grant peace and joy to all. So if peace means fullness with God and harmony with our brothers and sisters, then it makes sense that it is peace that we offer to each other when we're grieving. After all, those who have departed from us are not departing into nothingness or departing into the graves that we're burying their bodies in, but they're departing from this world in hopes of entering into a fullness of peace with our Lord in heaven. This is why we say to those who have fallen asleep that they are resting in peace, because they are now resting with the Lord. Today is 40 days after Christmas, and today we celebrate the Lord's presentation to the temple on the 40th day of his earthly life. The gospel account from this event from St. Luke presents us an aged man very old man named Simeon. He was righteous and godly, and he was promised that he would not die until he saw the Lord's cross. Once he receives the infant Jesus in his arms, he offers his famous song of prayer, saying, Now let your servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the face of all people. These words have been recorded and recited for two millennia ever since. However, they aren't a eulogy for St. Simeon, who is now finally able to enter into his rest now, but an ongoing prayer for peace. Whether we are talking about a global legend like Kobe Bryant or a hometown hero like Specialist Moore, 
or even an intimate family member who has fallen asleep. Their lives carry on with the Lord. And the good news is that we on earth can still participate in their lives if we meet them in prayer. Every time we pray, we connect with Christ, the same Christ with whom our departed loved ones are residing. So, if we want to reconnect with them, then first we need to look to connect with our Lord. And in doing so, we will find them there. They have attained a lasting peace with God, and we, through prayer, can find similar moments of that peace here on earth. And while you always have an opportunity to pray and connect with God on your own, the surest way to commune with the heavenly kingdom is here on Sunday mornings. The word peace is mentioned 36 times in the divine liturgy, including the last occasion, which we, like St. Simeon, ask that our Lord allow us to depart in peace. Each divine liturgy is a mystical experience that bridges together the earthly church with the triumphant church in heaven. Each Sunday, in peace do we pray to the Lord. This peace is not only the peace from above and the salvation of our souls, but also the peace in the whole world and the unity of the holy churches of God. And just like the Song of St. Simeon, today, this peace is experienced in the divine liturgy. It's not our last encounter with God or the inhabitants of heaven. Rather, it's an ongoing invitation to return week after week and to have glimpses of this kingdom, to have glimpses and foretastes of this peace here in our earthly lives. Week after week, we have the ability to rejoice with the souls of the righteous in heaven and to commune with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To clarify this point, I will conclude with the words of Metropolitan College this way. He says, let us depart in peace is the last commandment of the divine liturgy. But what does it mean? It means surely that the conclusion of the divine liturgy is not an end, but a beginning. Those words are not merely a comforting epilogue, but a call to serve and bear witness. In effect, those words, let us be part in peace, mean when the liturgy is over, the liturgy after the liturgy is about to begin. This, then, is the aim of the liturgy, that we should return to the world with the doors of our perceptions cleansed. We should return to the world after the liturgy, seeing Christ in every human person, especially in those who are suffering and who are grieving. We are to go out then from the liturgy and see Christ everywhere. End quote. The past few weeks we saw a lot of funerals, both locally here and abroad. But that doesn't mean that we saw a lot of endings. Those who depart in peace are those who leave one place in hopes of entering into a fuller relationship with Christ our Lord someplace else. Whether that's someone falling asleep in the Lord or us simply leaving church on Sunday mornings, let us remember that their path didn't end in death and that our paths don't end when we cross those doors. May all those who departed in rest find peace. And I pray that we all find a taste of that peace here in our earthly lives as well. May their memories be eternal. Now and ever to the age of age.